everyone, this is your mentor Enchantress and we're back to our Zapatar class. For today, I'm going to teach you the basics in UV mapping in Maya. So let's get started. I have here a dress that I created with our dress tutorial. That tutorial was only discussed with my mentees. That's why it's uh, you cannot find it in my Zapatar class playlist. So for those who are not my mentees, I'm sorry, that was a really long discussion, so I only discussed that with my mentees. But this is the dress that I was able to create during that tutorial, so I'm going to teach you how you can UV map items, specifically this dress. So before we start, let me uh, explain what's the purpose of creating UV map for your items. So if you have an experience creating uh, 2D items in Zepeto, you probably already know that there are some templates here available under um, in Zepeto Studio where you can create your 2D items by simply designing um, the templates that Zepeto provided. So this is one of them. So um, as you can see, there this is the template or the pattern that you can design so you can submit your 2D item. And this is the UV, the UV map of that item. So I'm going to turn this on. This is how the UV map looks like. The reason why UV map is important in creating 3D items, especially if you are going to design it. Most of the items requires design or patterns. When you convert it in unity so that's why when we create our items it's really best if we can create a nice and clean uv map and another thing is that when you add like um, an ambient occlusion map and normal map you need to do the uv mapping first so you can add more details without really adding all the count to your items so if you notice the items that are usually on the top of the hot list uh, they really have nice ambient occlusion maps and normal maps um, they have like really intricate details that makes them stand out so if you want to create items that will st stand out uh, you have you really have to learn how to UV map your items. So here I have the dress and uh, the number one rule that you have to follow whenever you UV map an item that has skin is do not ever touch the skin, the UV map of the skin. If you change the UV map placement or how it's laid out, like um, let me show you how there, that will affect how um, the color of the avatar skin will look like when they wear your item so please for the love of whatever you believe in do not touch the skin any item that has skin like for example handbag we have the skin with a closed hand right do not touch that as well so for this one we're not gonna be doing the uv map for skin so you better hide it and then the next step um, that you need to do before you start uv mapping is always delete any history so that we can prevent any errors or mistakes from happening as i mentioned in my previous tutorial there are some tools in maya that may not work properly if you do not delete history and also you have to center pivot and most especially freeze transformation so you have to do this make sure that before you move on with uv mapping you do this so now I'm going to teach you now, uh, the basics with the UV editor tool. So you have to select this one modeling here and you have to click UV, UV editor. Or if you prefer this one, um, I also use this one, but, I, but I'm really more used to um, just staying with the standard and the UV tool. But I guess I'm, I'm going to try using this for this one since this is really designed to for the uv work in maya this layout here the workspace layout so we'll, we'll just stick with this so we can like see both the uv and how it looks like on the object so whenever you do uv mapping you have to make sure that you can see the actual item and then this this is the uv map so i'm not sure if some of you are uh, have experience in like dressmaking here in the philippines that's one of the subject that high school students even primary school students uh, take like creating clothes or dressmaking and if you have an idea how to create patterns of clothes then you will most probably 
understand the concept of creating a UV map because uh, we're basically creating the pattern of the clothes or the items that we are creating here. We, we are just laying them out so that when we create the texture files for the item, the texture will, be, will look perfectly aligned with the item that we created here. Let me uh, explain what are the options here that we will normally use. So let's start with this one. So this view here it will show you the wire this is the wireframe view so it basically is the same um, with the wireframe view here and the viewport it will show you the edges of your item but i don't usually I, I will use it the most definitely but i usually use this one this is the shaded view if you notice there are red uh, there's like a pink portion here and there's a blue one so that um, the concept of this that it will show you the portions of your item that is laid out uh, reverse like um, if it's red it, this means that your um, item or the that portion of the item let me go back here this one it's not facing the correct way so um, imagine you have a cloth or you have like a t-shirt so the uh, the textile um, that is used to create your t-shirt it has like a front side with the, the one that has the design and also the back side which is the one that usually does not have like the prints um, that is shown in the front side of the shirt so when you lay it out on a uh, surface you have to lay it out like with the front face facing upwards right so you can see the design of your clothes so in this uh, case the red one it means that the back side or the back face of your item is facing upwards so it's not facing the normal way or the uh, right way so we need to make sure that your uv map does not have red or pink color pink means that there's an overlapping uv map so that means that there are um some portions that that is hidden on um under the other uv map so when you lay out the pattern it will have the same design with that so we also need to um, make sure that we avoid that so the only color that we should see in our uv map is the blue color so this means that there's no overlapping portions and the uv map is facing the right way so that when you lay out your design especially if you are you creating a design with text on it it will um, the text will look um, properly or in the correct uh, manner it will not be backwards like um, if, if you know what I mean, right? That's why it, this is imp an important option or uh, setting here in the UV editor tool. We will uh, mostly use this and also this one. This is the distortion, UV distortion view. So if you will see any red or blue color here, this means that this um, portions will have distortion what i mean with distortion that means that when when you lay out your design on your item your design will look distorted or wonky so we are trying to avoid that we want to make the items as perfect as possible right so now that i discussed this we're moving on to this one so this is important that you turn this on you make sure that this is highlighted because this view will show you the texture borders or the seams of your items so seams meaning it's the line along the garment along which two pieces of fabric are sewn together in a garment or other article so this is the seams um this is the line where the clothes are cut and sewn together like um as you can see in the picture so that's what we call the seam so it's important that we can assign the seam of our item and to me i'd like to make my items as seamless as possible so that when i lay out the design there will be the especially with patterns there will be as less less cuts of the patterns as there can be so we are trying to uh, create UV map with as little seams as possible to make the design seamless. So yeah, that's um, that's why you have to turn this on. This one, I think, when you like click this, this there's like colors. I don't know what it's used for, but I don't usually know, um, use that one. And then um, let's move on to this view. 
this is why I don't like this layout. I'll just go back to standard. <laughs> I'm used to this one. So let me just move this here and then this one here. This is how I usually lay out my UV editor tool. So it will be easier for me to see everything. Um, when you do UV mapping, you have to see both this op the viewport, the UV editor tool, and this, this option here. We, we are going to be using this one as well. So we are focusing on this two tabs here. So um, we are here on the grid. So if you turn this on, you can see the UV spaces. So this is uh, this box here is a UV space. The use for this one is that you will be able to tell if your item is in a specific UV space where you need it to be. Because when we go to our conversion lessons in our fourth week, I'm going to uh, discuss about the custom shader how you can use that under the custom shader there's like a guide here where you need to put like a uv map of your item that you would like to uh, to apply the velvet uh, isolate material and sequin texture or shader that zepetto provided so if you We'll use the custom shader file. It's important that you know where you can place the uh, specific UV map of certain items that you would like to apply the custom shader to. So we there will be further discussion regarding this on our fourth week. Don't worry. I will discuss that in detail. We're going to focus on UV mapping today. So um, I always make sure that it's turned on so I can ha uh, know where the UV maps are in the grid like in the space here it's always in the zero space here this is the a default space i usually just turn this on instead the grid view because um we you need to see how the squares looks looks like for example this one on your item we need to make sure that as much as possible the squares will look perfect squares on the item if you like distort it like this way um let me show you there so as you can see, the square turned into like rectangles. That means that when you put your texture on your item, the design will definitely look distorted. So as much as possible, we want perfect squares to look on our, our, to show up on our item here when we do our UV mapping. So you need to turn this on to activate that. And there, um, we finished this line here. I'm going to show you, uh, let me perhaps reset all the uh, the uv editor tools so i can show you all the settings that you need to know here so i'll just go back here so there the next settings that we are uh, going to be using is this one so automatic um this this tab here create it will create the uv map of your item so there are uh, certain options here that we are going to be using i'm going to show you what each of this does so that you have an idea which one will work best for you but for to me what i always use is this three option or not really three mostly this just two this two option so here is how and why you will need to work with this option so if you select all of your items and then you create a uv map using the automatic option it will do that so what it does it it will create like a system generated uv map however it doesn't really look good to me like there's like for example this one so it created the uv map with this shell separated to each other but what we really need so that our design will look perfect on our item is that we need this uh, entire shell or um, this item to have like just one UV shell but for in this case it has like a lot of separated one and like um, they're divided in really uneven like parts so I, we don't really like the automatic option so I do not ever use that let me just uh, undo that and then if you create the camera base this one I, I also use this at some point but not as much as the other options here. The so camera base, basically it will create a UV map based on how it looks on your viewport. So you, if you use the camera base option, you have to make sure that um, the item is facing the way that you want the UV map to be laid out. So for example, this one, I want it to be laid out like how 
um, it looks like in the viewport so I'm gonna create the camera base and it will follow that however um, on the side of it it will look distorted since it will focus on creating perfect UV map only on this um, portion which is completely shown in the viewport so the portion where it's not 3d seen as much as in the front face it will not really um work with that and uh, as you can see there's like overlapping portions here that we are trying to avoid so um i use this sometimes but not as much as this one so normal base it's almost the same as the camera base or the automatic one but i don't i also don't use that so for the uh, create, for creating UV maps, I usually just use the cylindrical and the planar option. So cylinder, cylindrical as the name entails, if your item looks like more of a cylinder, for example this one, right? So it will create the UV map based on how a cylinder shape will be laid out. So let me try that one. There, right? So it created a UV map how the UV map of a cylinder object usually looks like. So I'm going to cre um, like create a cylinder object here and then use that option. So you can see a comparison. So there, it laid it out the way that um, a cylinder usually is laid out. So it's really up to you how you how you determine your item looks like. If it's more like a cylinder, then you go for the cylinder option. But if you think it will work with planar planar mode as the name entails it's it's best if you can use it on items that looks more like a plane so this is a plane this one so it will create a uv map that will lay out the shell flat so how it will look like when um imagine like you have a cloth and then you lay it out on a flat surface so the uv map will look like how it is when it's laid out on a flat surface so that's the concept of the planar option and then when you go to planar you have to click this box and then uh, fit projection to i just stick with this one i do not really change it and then here this is where we usually change the option here so as i mentioned in our previous uh, tutorial or discussion x-axis is always the view left and right right so left and right x-axis if your item is facing left and right the front is facing left or right and then the other the back is facing the other side then you have to select x-axis but normally we don't have items such uh, like that unless your item is located here on the left or on the side y-axis is basically up and down so if your item is likely here in the view for it it's like laid out with the front facing upwards and the back facing downwards then you use this one but mostly we will use the z-axis since most of our items it's facing front and back right like it's how it's normally worn by an avatar it's facing front and back so i normally use this one and also camera you can use that as i've shown earlier and this one you want to make sure that this uh this option is checked all the time do not uncheck it because if you create like a UV map, um, let me show you an example. So I'm go going to create a UV map of this. It will look stretched, like distorted. Since you did not turn this on, so if I turn that on, there. So the UV map looks almost perfect. Only if this part here does not have distortion because we're, we basically selected the z-axis right so front and back will have priority in getting the best uh, uv map laid out but for the side it will look distorted but we will be able to fix that later when we go to the other options here but yeah yeah that's why i always use the z option or the z-axis under the planar mode so want to make sure uh, you want to make sure this is checked and there um i'll just keep this uv map so I can show you the next option. So now we wanna um, when you create UV map, you ha you wanna make sure that you're focusing on just one item at a time. So do not combine these items, the separated items together. Especially if you can like UV map them separately, so you can see where you can lay out specific items. Because when you lay it out later on the UV map, you have to position the 
the item by hierarchy. So the one at the top needs to be at the top of the UV map, of course, and then downwards you have to follow the hierarchy or how it's um, set up here in the viewport. Now we're going to um, create seams. So as I mentioned earlier, seams is the line that separates the uh, piece of fabric in an actual clothes, right? So you wanna, um, if you look at your item, you wanna determine if um, if you're wearing this item in real life, where do you usually see the seams or the cut of the garment? So usually it's on either side, right? This one and on the other side as well. But sometimes it's at the back, but it's really dependent on your on the design that you're creating. So uh, to my in my case, I'm gonna put the seams here. So I'm gonna turn on the symmetry tool object X. And then I will um, go to the edge edge selection here. You can use this or you can also use this. It's the same. Doesn't matter which one you use. So make sure you are, you are on the edge selection and you want to select the all the edges where you want to put the seam. So in my case, this one and also this one. So there. Next step that you want to do is to Hold shift on your keyboard and then right click and then go to cut. There. If you notice, there's already a seams on this part. It's uh, represented by a thick white line. So that's the seams. So when you lay out your pattern there, there will be a cut on the design here. So I'm okay with that. And now we need to lay out or to unfold um, the UV map so that it will, uh, the, the square will not look distorted on this part. So how can you do that? Go here. This is the UV, uh, the UV selection mode. So I'm going to, you can either select it here or you can also select it here, but I'll select it here. So I, I will know which one is the front side. So, so um, just double click one uh, UV or vertex and then go to modify and then unfold. So I'm going to uh, click the box here so you can see the settings. So I'll reset it. So this is the resetted settings. Um, let me put it at 512. Since under the Cepeto Studio Guide, under modeling and mapping, it says here that the uh, UV template, yeah, the texture and, or the UV template must be uh, 256 by 256 up to 512 but i usually just use the 512 because this is the best option to me it's up to you but when you um submit it to sepeto studio the maximum size should be 512 by 512 so i'm gonna stick with that one and then here there are two options here method unfold 3d and legacy there are certain um instances that i use the legacy option to unfold it but if I'm not really satisfied with how it looks like, I will um, select the Unfold 3D. Um, you want to make sure that you are selecting the one option that will provide you the UV map that has minimized distortion. So I want to make sure that all the, as I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that the squares here looks normal and not distorted. So that when you lay out your design, the design will not look distorted. So this is how, what I got. Uh, by doing that so it's up to you if you're okay with that but i'm gonna just orient this Ooh. Uh, i wanna do it like that orient this shell and then now you can lay this out you can put it where you want the top to be but of course you have to follow the hierarchy it's the best uh, um the the best layout of your item or the items located at the top should be at the top of your uv map followed by the items like downwards going downwards so i'm gonna put it here you can also put seams here but in my case i don't want to put seams i want to make my uv map as seamless as possible so i'm gonna put it here or maybe just outside this uh, space so i can focus on the other portion here just so i will not have confusion and then you can do the same thing unfold i selected the legacy option and make sure that the map size is 512 there and then just rotate it so that ooh, it's facing the um you need to make sure that the letters here are facing the correct way and not like upside down 
So your pattern will also not be upside down. And then now um, you can lay this out. I prefer it this way. There, I'll just put it this two here. I'll, I'll lay them out later once I do the UV map of the other item. So now I'm going to do the UV map of this strap. Oh, I um, forgot to <laughs> tell you. So there, as you can see, this is turned on. It's blue, right? So that means it's the UV map is facing the right way. But if I'm going to flip this, let me flip it. Where's flip? There. Oh, so there. I, as you can see, it's red, right? That means that it's not facing the right way. So it, uh, the back faces are facing upwards instead of it hidden downwards, right? So we are trying to um, avoid that. So you want to make sure that you turn this on. See if um, the UV map is blue. If it's blue, you're on the right track. So we're going to move on with this trap. So just do the same thing that I did with... The top, um, for this, I'm gonna also do planar because it's more like a plane to me. Like it's a, str a straight, long plane, right? So it's in the Z axis. I'll, I'll do that. I'm okay with that. And then I'm gonna, I wanna uh, put the seams. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me just turn off the grid uh, uh, for a moment so I can see it clearly. So there, I want to put the seams here, inwards. So I usually put the seams on the parts that's facing inwards. So it's not really as noticeable as um, this part. This is the part facing out outwards. So it will be the most not noticeable part of your item. So again, shift and then click cut ready set when you point it to cut and then i am going to choose this uv map oh it selected the entire it's okay i'll just unfold it there so you have your let me turn this on again you have your strap uv so i'm going to orient this uh, i used to orient so it can it will be laid out straightly on my uv map so you have to do that or use that that's really a helpful tool and one mo uh, one more thing that you need to consider um as I mentioned earlier, you need to make sure that the square looks perfect on your item. So the other thing that you need to consider is um, you want to make sure that the size of the squares showing on your item is all the same size. So that the if it's something like this, if the squares are um, smaller in this part, it will have like smaller, it will project this, um, the design smaller. Uh, if you get what I mean, like uh, imagine that you lay out the design here. So on this part, the design will look smaller. In this one, it uh, it will appear larger because the squares are larger, right? So you want to make sure that they're almost the same size. So let me make adjustment here. So if you make it bigger, the square will look smaller because it will cover um, like more space on your UV map. So that's that's it. That's why. Let me orient this. I want to make sure they're oriented really nicely. And there you have the UV map for both the strap and your top. Now we're going to go to the button. This one.
So you already uh, UV mapped the button, and now we can proceed with UV mapping the shorts. And now I'm gonna do the UV map of the skirt. So this is, um, I think this will be more complicated since it's a two layer skirt, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. The cylindrical looks good to me. There, it looks like that. Uh, let me turn this on. Yeah, it looks good to me. So I'm gonna do cylinder. However, it's cut here in this part. I don't like it cut here. So if you would like to redo the seams with the UV um, that was created by the cylindrical and the planar mode you can just select those edges that has the automatic seams um, let me turn this off so I can see so you can select this edge let me turn this off um, I cannot see the seams now let me turn this on. there uh, let me just uh, close the UV it's um, getting in my way so the seams are here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna just select this one there and then go back to UV editor then you go to stitch together or you can just right click there stitch together there so I'm gonna redo the seams at the side instead so this one the one facing um, the seams of the top I'm gonna choose this uh, symmetry, turn on, choose this uh, edges, and then also this where the uh, two skirts are intersecting or like connected. So I'm gonna cut it there on those parts and then right click, cut there. Oh, okay. Mm, the symmetry tool does not work with this side. So I'm gonna select that one and then cut there. So I got the cut that I want. Now I'm gonna select this uh, UV and then unfold them.
And there we have the UV map of the skirt. So we only have one more item here, the ribbon. Um, same as what I did with the button earlier since this comprises of like three separate objects um, combined together. I'm gonna separate them first so I can UV map them properly. There. So that's how you do the UV mapping. Uh, that's how you create clean UV maps. So there's enough space here. It's up to you if you want to like utilize them. But to me, it's I'm okay with the UV map that I made for the dress. So there.
that's how you create your UV map. So once you already know all these um, uh, all these tools that under the UV editor um, option, then it will be easier for you to perform UV mapping. So let me rename this ribbon and let me put it here. So there, we're finished. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and take care. Goodbye.